In this second dialogue, we discuss the phases or analytic tasks in Trina's project that were conducted outside Atlas TI, the reasons for this, and how Trina has conducted later projects. I open this video by introducing the five-level QDA principle that using Atlas TI powerfully means using it from start to finish of a project. So one of the five-level QDA principles is it should be possible to use the software powerfully from start to finish. In this particular study, you didn't do the first stage using Atlas TI. Analytic task 1A, review the relevant literature. 1B, familiarize with the grief forms to generate ideas. We did not do this in the software partly because uh, we weren't sure the study was actually going to pan out to be anything. So ah. these were sort of preliminary, let's just take a look at this, the, these forums and see if there might be a study that we can do. So you'll see in phase two is where we went ahead and started the Atlas project because that's the point at which we knew we were going to move ahead with this actually being something worth doing. So phase one's really pre-planned. Yeah, that yeah. was really yeah. like, yeah, yeah, analytic focus as in, you know, is, the, is, there, is there a there there? Is there something that we think we right. want to look at further? The other one that came up was the holistic interpretation of discursive features and variability. You did that in Word, is that correct? Yeah, once we had the discursive features and we had to figure out how we were going to write about them, we pulled that into Word probably and started doing the writing. And I think now, you know, we may keep, we may have kept that in a memo or started actually writing drafts of the paper and kept that all in the file. But yeah, that's the point at which we came out of the software and circulated probably Word drafts as we were writing up the findings instead of keeping it in the software. Can I just show you? you one of my projects just at a stage like this I, I stayed within the software and just to see what your re reaction mm -hmm. is so this is a study of a graduate class in instructional design where the students do an authentic activity and the study is to try and find out how students uh, valued this benefited from this understood authenticity at the early stage of the project I had various uh, networks of codes I started with a uh, a model or an idea of authenticity is like a paradigm that has an epistemology. And so all the codes that related to how the students felt they knew what an authentic project was, I put in here and conceptualized it and came up with these two themes. And then I had a similar network for methodology, how they went about doing an authentic project with a real client differently from how they would a class project and an ontology, what they believed an authentic project was. So there were these hierarchies to sort everything out. Then I got to a point of further refined coding and I was ready to write up the conclusions. And that's sort of the stage where I get the impression that you would have exported some of the data and written it up and massaged it and organized it. Maybe right. had this up alongside right. a work document. But what I did was that I went further to a second iteration. I developed a new network with new sets of codes, which is like a two by two model. I figured out from various readings that there were two dimensions. There were three degrees of authenticity that they experienced and they came up in three different areas. So I made these codes, which are just markers, they're just, but these, you can see these have a lot of quotations in them, 49 mm -hmm. quotations. So these are renamed codes to represent the kind of cells of this new table. So mm -hmm. instead of doing it in Word, I did all my thinking in this particular network. And then I had a second thing down here where uh, these three were renamed as what you do, how you do it, and who you do it for. And then I had these topics in here, each of which has multiple codes linked to it and has subsidiary networks. So I basically used the networks as a way of working through refining this into mm -hmm. a sort of finding. And then I had my reorganized codes where I could extract the data and just transform that into sentences. But then the uh, sections of the article were then these things. Is, is that like a writing technique to you that you do just as well in Word? Or is this more related to the style of the analysis? This requires a somewhat more fine-grained level of coding so that I could build things up into these things. I didn't start out with, you know, nine or 10 or 12 mm -hmm. codes. I had 60 or 70. Are you also drafting your findings within the software? Yes, in the comment areas. 
Oh, I see. And then you... And then I export them all, I export uh-huh. them all with the comments. Some of these have large comments. And some right. Don't. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. I'd extract the codes with the codes and the data underneath them. Yeah. No, in, in other projects, I've definitely stayed in the software much longer mm-hmm. than we did in this one. So yeah, that's definitely worth doing and, and worth staying in it as long as you can, because as soon as you start working outside of it, and of course, that was part of why it was so hard to recreate this project for this book chapter is that we didn't have it all in one place, you know, as we were just starting to use the software. And so things were in different places and we don't have access to it all anymore, which mm. we would have had if, it, if we had, you know, stayed in it longer. But at this point, we were, you know, we were pretty new in the software and I don't, I definitely was not using networks yet quite mm-hmm. as much as I would now. So when you described on your videos about uh, holistically writing, mm-hmm. that doesn't preclude using the networks. To- no. Right. No, I definitely could have stayed in there for that.